are the San Francisco Giants for real? I think that's a question that all Giants fans want answered pretty soon. Because the trade deadline is two days away, so if the Giants are going to decide whether or not to buy or sell or just do nothing, they have two days left to do it. Anyway, what is going on guys? My name is the California Cougar, and today we're going to be talking about the Giants and basically everything that's happening before the trade deadline and we're gonna go over some teams playoff chances things like that we're just gonna talk it's mainly gonna be about the Giants though so yeah the question is are the Giants for real because recently their offense has definitely cooled down ever since they came home and played the Mets at home and then they also played the Cubs at home and then they went back and played the Padres on the road. They've scored more than five runs, I think, one time. One time. And it was against the Padres yesterday. So, yeah. Today is a day off for them, so they don't have any games. But their next few series that they do have, they have the Phillies, and then they have the Rockies on the road. And then they come home again, and I think they play the Nationals, the Phillies again, and then they have the A's. So they got a pretty interesting schedule coming up. Also a very tough schedule. But the series against the Phillies are definitely going to be big ones because the Phillies are right in the midst of the wild card race with the Giants. Let's go over some of the Giants' stats right now, or I guess their standings. Currently, they're 54-52, and 52, so they're two games above 500, which I don't think anybody really expected that from them, especially at this time of the year. I think, if anything, people were expecting them to maybe go like, 1-0, maybe 2-0, but after that, be below 500 for the whole season. But somehow, they've managed to pull off a 54-52 record in 106 games. And they're just two and a half games outside of the wild card spot right now. And if you look at the wild card standings, right now, you have two division leaders in the National League. You have the Braves and the Dodgers. They're the two division leaders. And then there's actually a tie for the Central Division title right now with the Cubs and the Cardinals both with 56 and 49 records, and then the second wild card team, or, yeah, obviously one of those would win the division, the other one would be a wild card team, and then the second wild card team would be the Nationals, also with a 56 and 49 record. So, yeah, it's three teams right there on top. And then right behind them you have the Phillies, one game back, with a 55 and 50 record, and then the Brewers, also a game back, with a 56 and 51 record. And then you have the Giants, 54 and 52, with two and a half games of separation between them and the wild card spot. So technically they're battling for both the first and second wild card spot. But yeah, the point is they're right in the wild card race. The question is, are they for real? Their pitching's doing okay. Madison Bumgarner can still pitch really well. Samarja can pitch really well too. Tyler Beatty, he's struggling in his last start, but before that he was doing really well. Sean Anderson's been struggling, so they would need to do something about that. Derek Holland recently got designated for assignment and was eventually traded over to the Cubs. Drew Pomeranz is now in the bullpen. So, yeah, the and they don't really have a fifth starter right now. There's that one guy, Connor Menez or something like that, that came up and started, pitched five innings against the Mets and actually pitched pretty well. And then, of course, you have Derek Rodriguez, who also pitched recently in a starting game against the Rockies. He also did pretty well. So they have options in the rotation, and obviously their bullpen's been pretty lights out. They've gone to, like, what, six extra inning games or something like that? Six or seven extra inning games, and they've won every single one of them since the All-Star break. And But, yeah, the, the thing is, most of their wins since, since coming back home to Oracle Park to play the Mets... I think every single one of their wins was one run was a one run game. I think, I think every single one of their wins was a one run game, and their losses have been pretty, like definitely been by wider margins. So, yeah, what do I think about the Giants' situation? Two days before the trade deadline, I still think they should be sellers. At least sell off some of their relievers. They've got, they've got such a good a good bullpen. They can sell off a reliever or two. Someone like Sam Dyson or Tony Watson. Or even Will Smith. Like, hell, just sell off Will Smith and let Sam Dyson be the closer or something like that. You could probably get a lot back for someone like that. Especially from someone that needs bullpen pitching. Like, maybe like maybe the Nationals or someone like that. Or the Twins or the Phillies. Someone that's actually going to compete or that actually has a better chance of competing. Now, for Madison Bumgarner, Madison Bumgarner is a little bit more difficult. 
a lot of people are saying they should still trade him because, I mean, he's going to be a free agent this offseason, and a lot of people are saying that he's going to walk if he hits free agency. Here's what I have to say. I do think it would be the right move to trade him, but I think they should re-sign him in the offseason. I've been saying that for a while. I still stand by that. However, I think they should, but they got to get some offense. That's what they really need. If they're going to go for a playoff spot, they need to get some offense. I don't think they should be like all out buyers. I think they should do like a need for need kind of thing. Like trade some of their bullpen pitchers over to teams that need them and get some offense back, especially outfield, because right now their outfield is still kind of weak. I mean, Kevin Pillar is playing pretty good defense, but he isn't really hitting that much. Mike yastrzemski has been off and on for a while. And then Alex Dickerson. Alex Dickerson's actually been hitting pretty well. Like, him and Yastrzemski are like the guys, along with Donovan Solano. I think he's the other guy. But, yeah, like Joe Panic is terrible. Brandon Belt hasn't been hitting well. Brandon Crawford hasn't been hitting well. So, like, I would say trade some of those guys away, but no one's going to want them. The one thing I don't want the Giants to do is trade any of their top prospects. They have four prospects in the top 100 right now in baseball. Like, they have four of them. At the beginning of the year, they only had two of them. But now they have four of them. Joey Bart, Helio Ramos, Mark Lu or Marco Luciano, and um, Hunter Bishop, is the, who is the guy that they just drafted. And then Logan Webb is their top pitching prospect. So I don't think they should trade any of those guys. If they're going to be buyers, they have to trade, like, someone down down a little bit farther. Maybe somebody like Chris Shaw or Aramis Garcia, who actually has major league major league experience, but is still down lower in the Giants prospect rankings than someone like Joey Bart or Helio Ramos, who could potentially make a big impact on the Giants when they reach the major leagues. They need to avoid trading those guys, trade some of the lower guys if they're really gonna be buyers at this deadline. And again, I don't think it's the right move to be buyers. I heard that they were going to go for someone like Marcus Stroman or Matt Boyd from the Tigers. Of course, Marcus Stroman's now off the board. We'll get to that in a little bit. But still, I don't think they should go for these bigger players like that. I mean, if they want to make a playoff push, fine by me. But don't sell off your top prospects for them. So, yeah, that's all I really have to say about the Giants right now. Do I think they're for real? Not really. I think they're going to go back to their old ways eventually. I mean, the Phillies series are really going to be a telltale sign of whether or not they're ready for the playoffs. So, yeah, now they have been hitting better on the road than they, than they have been at home, but still. I mean, their offense is just so, like, inconsistent, I should say, that I really don't know if they really have a chance. Again, I'd love to see them in the playoffs. And that's another reason to keep Madison Bumgarner, actually, is if they do get a wild card spot... They can just put Madison Bumgarner up, he pitches nine shutout innings, boom, Giants move on to the playoffs. But here's the other thing as to why I don't think they should be buyers. The, like, once you get, even if they got past the wild card game, they, they run into the team known as the Los Angeles Dodgers, who of course is, has the best record in baseball right now, and they've just been hitting really well lately. So, yeah, they have, they have to get past the Dodgers somehow. Now, I think the Giants could do it, but realistically, it's probably not going to happen. So, yeah, like, how, it's, how much is a wild card game really worth? And actually, if you look at the wild card game statistics, of the 14 wild card teams that made it into their division series, only two have gone on to the World Series, and only one of them have actually won the World Series. And both wildcard teams that went on to the World Series played each other in the World Series, actually. 2014, Giants-Royals. Giants ended up winning that. So, yeah, how much is it really worth to the Giants to go for a wildcard spot? Because the history of wildcard teams isn't that great. Now, again, I think if any team can do it, it is the Giants. The Giants have great playoff experience in the 2010s so far. And if it... If the Giants didn't have such a sucky bullpen in 2016, they chances are they could have gotten past the Cubs, too. They would have gone to Game 5, at least. So, yeah. I just don't know what the Giants are doing. I don't really think they're... Like, if they're really gambling on this season because it's Bochy's final season, I think that's a bad move. So, yeah, that's just my thoughts on the Giants. Let's talk about some of these other teams. So... 
So far, some of the trades that have happened. Marcus Stroman, let me get, I talked about that a little bit earlier, but Marcus Stroman has been traded to the Mets. I don't really know what the New York Mets are doing here, trading for Marcus Stroman. I mean, sure, it adds depth to their already OP rotation. I mean, they got Jacob DeGrom, Noah Syndergaard, um, Marcus Stroman, Steven Matz, Zach Wheeler, and they, they actually just traded Jason Vargas over to the Phillies, so... Yeah, they got. A, they didn't really get a lot back for him, I don't think, though. But then again, I don't think they were really expecting much. But yeah, Jason Vargas traded over to the Phillies. I'll talk about that in a little bit, too. But yeah, Marcus Stroman, I, I don't know what the Mets are doing here. They gave up their top pitching prospect and another pitching prospect for him. So yeah, even though the Mets are 50 and 55, like, they should be sellers at this deadline. But... Yeah, they, and yet they trade for Marcus Stroman. Now, I don't know if this was a move to try and compete in 2020, because the, Marcus Stroman does have a year of control left, I think, before he hits free agency. But yeah, there are also talks of the Mets trading someone like Zach Wheeler or Noah Syndergaard. Now, I don't know if the Mets are going to go through with trading Syndergaard. Wheeler, I wouldn't be quite as surprised with, but... Yeah, I don't. I I just don't know what the Mets are doing. So yeah, that's my. Those are my quick thoughts on the Marcus Stroman trade. There's also reports of. There's there's also a bunch of other people on the trade blog. Obviously, Madison Bumgarner, Will Smith, Sam Dyson, Tony Watson from the Giants, Felipe Vasquez from the Pirates. A lot of people are saying that he might go to the Braves or the Dodgers. Like the Dodgers need a bullpen arm, so they might get Felipe Vasquez or or someone like Shane Green from the Tigers. Or Nick Castellanos, if a team needs a hitter. There's a lot of people left on the trade market still. Some of the biggest names. Again, like I said, Noah Syndergaard was one of those names as well. And Zach Wheeler was another one from the Mets. But, yeah, I don't really know what they're doing. Like, the, yeah, Meanwhile, if you look at the rest of the division, like I'm surprised at how far the Rockies have dropped. They're 49-57. and 57. Big yikes. They were supposed to be like contenders this year. But their pitching's just really screwing them. Same with the Brewers, 56 and 51. Although the Brewers have a much better chance. But yeah, if you look right now at the wild card stats, like the D backs are right behind the Giants, three and a half games, and then you have the Mets at six games. After that, Pirates, Reds, Padres, Rockies, they're all starting to fall back. The Pirates are now ten games back. Marlins have been out of it for a while, so yeah. We're starting to see like who's going to be more of a seller, who's going to be more of a buyer at the deadline, although the Giants are still kind of on the bubble. The question is, though, and actually, let me look at the AL stats real quick. The American League wildcard's really heating up, because you have Cleveland, who has the first spot, and then you have Oakland. Tampa Bay's a half game back. Boston's a game back. Like, Tampa Bay, I don't know what happened to them. They're 4-6 and six in their last 10, so... They just dropped off suddenly. I don't know what's going on. And then you have the Angels five games back. Texas is six and a half games back now. Yeah, Texas is now, th they're three and seven in their last ten. They're now down to a 500 record. So, yeah, Mike Miner, he's another big name on the trade block that if somebody needed a starting pitcher, he could be someone to go for. But, yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for now. I don't really have anything else. I will do a little bit of trade analysis after the deadline is over, see what teams made moves, like who made the right moves, who I think made the wrong moves, and like how it may have improved their playoff chances. But yeah, I just wanted to get a video up before the trade deadline, mainly to talk about the Giants and what they're doing. Like, I don't know if they're for real or not, but yeah, like I don't think they're for real. I just don't see them, I just don't see it happening with them. So yeah, anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. So. Make sure to hit the like button down below and make sure to comment below. What do you think is going to happen at the trade deadline? And do you really think the Giants have any chance of making the playoffs? Do you think the Giants are going to go all in this year for Bochy's final season and try and get a wild card spot and possibly make a run at the World Series? Make sure to let me know down in the comments below. I mean, it would be a big underdog story if they did somehow win the World Series. But, again, I just don't see that happening. But, yeah, make sure to let me know in the comments below what you think so far, and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos to come in the future. And until next time, once again, my name is the California Cougar, and always remember to stay California cool. Peace.